Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to my channel, Tina's Knitting Needle. My name is Tina, and you can find me on all different social media handles, Tina's Knitting Needle. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you. Welcome back. How you doing? And if you are a new subscriber or you're just passing through, hey, let me lower this. So I did post up on my TikTok yesterday um, that I wanted to post a video today about talking about my um, mental health, my surgery, and toxicity in the workplace. So today's video is gonna be a slightly little bit different. I do have a couple of items I wanna show as well. Um, one of my newest t-shirts, Adventure Time. My favorite, oh, I love Marceline. Marceline, who doesn't love Marceline, right? <laughs> so, um, a couple of new things um, as far, well, not really new things, some stuff that I haven't brought out in a while and I haven't shown. Um, so I kinda of wanna to touch base on some of those projects. Um, today when I'm talking I'm going to be working on my just regular sparkly pinwheel now that the air is calmed down I can lower the music a little bit again it's a little bit different today um, I know some people from TikTok might be coming over here for some tea so that's not the case and um, we're gonna shut that down right now I am the bigger and better person in certain situations that's been going on in my life so I'm going to show one of my blankets that I finally finished. I'm super proud of. And then we'll get to the crochet and what's been going on the last few months between my surgeries, again, my mental health and toxicity in the workplace. And it's not just one place or my most recent job that was toxic. It was quite a couple this year. I was going to say a few. It's not even that many. Um, a couple this year. And I understand it's with the world changing and things like that. And um, people are just more open and honest about um, their toxicity, being assholes. Um, it's really disturbing. It does take a toll on you. So again, thank you for stopping by. I hope this video is not too long, but um, it might be. If it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna try to have another video by this weekend because as I said, I did have some blankets that were going on. I'm just gonna lower this. Okay. I did have some blankets that I've made throughout the years and I don't think I've shown them on YouTube since I started YouTube a year ago. And with that being said, most of them are on my Facebook page, uh, Tina's Knitting Needle. And basically my son um, likes to sit there and chop some of my my items no good so i have to do some surgery this weekend on some blanket yarn i don't have the exact colors but i do have um blanket yarn any hoots so we're going to jump into the first project that i did finish i started about a, i think a week or two ago maybe even less than that i probably started yeah i had surgery two weeks ago um coming up on three weeks now so and i think i finished it within a week so this is the crochet pinwheel by the crochet crowd and if i'm looking a little jaundiced today it's because it's very cloudy outside it is 7 45 in the morning the sun hasn't came out and i got all lights on the earlier i do this the better i can go ahead and um start working on the house excuse me get some cleaning done and then maybe take a nap before my kids get home <laughs> so she is finished Look how pretty she has turned out super beautiful gorgeous and I, I stuck with the original pattern I like to do crab stitch for my ending border um, but I, did, I didn't want to go there this time I just went with my last um, a single crochet and then I went in with the shells The yarn is um, Karen One Pound, Karen Ombre, and the white is Lion Brand um, with Love. Um, as you can see with the Ombre, it's a more of a, I want to say, I think this is white, and I think this is cream. So, and because there wasn't a lot of white striping, I didn't want to have 
the blue or mint on top of it. I wanted it to pop. So I want the blanket to pop. It is mine. All these blankets I make are mine. Unless somebody requests, I take commissions and things like that. And But that's just, you know, uh, private message me on Facebook or on TikTok. With Instagram, I'm not the best. Um, Tina's underscore knitting underscore needle. Um, I'm mostly on TikTok and Facebook. So, and that's just Tina's knitting needle. So she's super warm. I love her. She is not too stiff. She's got a little bit of drape to her. So she worked out very, very beautiful. Um, pinwheels are my thing. I love making pinwheels. They're quick, they're easy. And um, when I have downtime, which these last few months I really haven't had downtime, um, I really haven't been able to make projects. Um, as you can see from my last video, um, I did say that when I was on medical leave, I was able to make my little crochet monsters. So, as I said, this video is going to be a little different today. Um, you can skip ahead. I don't know timestamps. I don't um, timestamp my stuff. I don't know how to even edit. This is a one-go kind of show. So... I want to um, bang out the work toxicity conversation with the quickness because, again, I know some people are probably coming from TikTok, um, nosy, whatever, to get the tea. As I said, I'm not that person. Um, I will not go into full detail of the mistreatment that I went through, um, how I was personally attacked every single day where I felt like I had to defend myself. So that's the point of the last job. Work in a toxicity place. Oh my God. <laughs> Dina, we were just dyslexic for a second. Toxicity in the workplace. It's just in general. So it started for me this year with my surgeries. Um, I have calcium deficiency in uh, my gums and in my bones from when I was pregnant with my son. And I have nerve damage in the right side of my jaw and in my face. So... I had to have a few more teeth removed. Um, it, it was it was painful to the point where I couldn't sleep. I was constantly um, crying. My face was swollen. I could barely speak. So I had a really good job at a senior citizen home. I should be crocheting while I'm talking, right? I had a really great job at the senior citizen home. I love the people. They were amazing um, to see them light up every day to come in and not only just clean their uh, apartments, but how grateful and thankful that they were every day you came in. And, you know, you, you build a bond with these older people. You know, they remind you of your grandparents or your parents. So um, it's, I think, one job that I do regret leaving earlier this year. But again, my health had taken a really bad decline. Um, I also had lost a lot of weight because of the pain i couldn't eat i couldn't sleep so um my mind was always going a million you know miles a minute and i just i couldn't deal i finally got the surgery on my mouth um got the teeth removed at that point they looked at my nerves and said that i'm okay for now but it can cause long-term damage and it cost thousands of dollars to repair it and it's not um it's not a guarantee that the, the nerves will be fully healed again. So I realized um, YouTube or even just talking in the workplace and public and whatnot, it was kind of hard for me to um, speak. From there, I had to leave that place sadly um, and put my health first. At that point, I did start working at um, a regular retail store. Um, that one was a nightmare as well. So after my surgery, they put me on like nine different antibiotics, painkillers, whatever. I was having these flare ups, really bad flare ups. And, um, it basically, my body was fighting off the medication and I looked horrible. I mean, my skin was patchy red. I looked like Freddy Krueger. It was horrible for me. Uh, I couldn't be in public. I didn't want to be in public. Um, I felt ashamed of how I looked. Um, I was sick all the time. Um, 
again, it, it's, it takes a toll on you. It really does take a toll on you mentally and physically. Um, at this point, they put me in four departments because this place, basically, the manager told me they're too cheap to pay for extra labor. So they were hiring part-timers to work like robots. I got put in the um, household products, detergents and things to where it made it even worse. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think. I started losing my vision in and out um, between the medication and all the products that I had to touch. I'm now going into some kind of like panic mode, anxiety mode to where they had to prescribe me even EpiPens because they were afraid I was going to... Um, stop breathing uh, ana anaphylactic an anaphylactic something like that I don't, know. I don't know the word again I can't do this my health is deteriorating um, I'm going to end up hospitalized started at another small crafting store about a month these are all like a month in between my health declines I get better and then I try to go back to work and then and before anybody comes out and says, oh, she just doesn't want to work, go go kiss my ass. Um, can't figure out what's going on with me. Just, at this point, I got rid of all the meds. I said, I have to stop the meds, let my system kind of clear up. And um, from there, let the doctors know. I stopped taking the medication, stopped the battle that was going on with my body. I don't know what's going on, but they couldn't figure it out. Rid my system of any kind of medication so excuse me so rid my body of the medication and that helped and then at that point they got me on the correct antibiotics and painkillers so now I'm at a small crafting store I was hired for morning shift, specifically morning shift. I told them I could not work night shift and full time. The first week was great. I got my morning shift. I got in at 6 a.m. I got home by 1, 2 o'clock before the kids got home from school. And I had, um, so morning and full time. By week number two, schedule goes up, cut down to four hours, three days, and night shift. And when I approached them, like, you know, the hell. Um, well, we're getting um, checkout machines, self-checkout machines. So because of the self-checkout machines, we don't need people full time. Um, we don't need them five days a week. And it's more likely in the evening when it gets extremely busy. So we need people at night. But again, that's not what I signed up for. I made it very clear when I went to my interview, I have kids and I have to be home for them by two o'clock, the latest two o'clock. As my daughter had just gotten married um, and she was ready to start her own journey in life, you know, with her new husband and go back to um, school to become an officer. Uh, she wanted to be a, a cop and her husband was in the military and they actually were going to, I believe, Virginia this month. So with my dog, my 20 year old leaving, that's why I made it very specific. I had to be mornings. Um, I don't care, I'll work the weekends. It doesn't bother me, my husband's home so I can work. I put up with it for about maybe three or four weeks a month. <clears throat> now mind you, they were paying single digit. Single digit, that's, that's basically for like a 16 year old, whatever but i needed to get back to work at the time and especially with all my medications i had to keep up with that stuff too you know after a month um i, I realized you know 60 70 dollars is not paying the bills it's it's barely even paying again medicine barely barely putting bread and milk on the table so thankfully my um resume was on oh, we don't want commercials. <laughs> Thankfully, my resume was up on Indeed and I was um, reached out by a hotel over in Covington. And um, I've worked for this franchise before. I was actually a manager for three years for this franchise. 
and the reason why I left that one after three years, the level of disrespect that the new general manager had towards women was very, very disgusting. Um, it, it just, it was disgusting. The way he treated women, the way he spoke to women, demeaned them. Um, this I will say, you come into a workplace and you tell a, f a fleet of 10 women that they belong in the kitchen and not in the rooms cleaning because men can clean better. He only lasted three months and I already had left at this point. So it, it, it was what it was. So now I get into another brand and um, same thing. I, I drive 15, 20 minutes to get to this place and um, yeah, today we don't have much workload for y'all. So what does that mean? We only have three rooms today per person. Now, excuse my French. I just waste my fucking gas to get all the way across town to clean three rooms. So when you calculate for the day, I only made like maybe $26, $27 after two hours or something like that. Again, that's not paying the bills. By week three or four in this place, um, I was already cross training to laundry. Hey, we need somebody in laundry today. Um, you mind jumping in? I jump into laundry and um, a set of sheets come down. At this point, um, the young lady who was um, mommy's daughter, you know, they own the hotel, so daughter gets away whatever the hell she wants, says, oh my God, is that a stain on there? Now listen, us women, we have accidents once a month and understandable. I can understand if the sheets had hair dye all over it. Um, this accident was intentional, smeared and destroyed. The size of the stain, I kid you not. Um, maybe the size of this, the bottom of the bottle. Okay. On the sheet. I'm dropping things. So, at this point, she catches wind of it, and she asks the housekeeper, what room did it come from? Housekeeper tells her what room, and proceeds to charge her card for $150. Are you serious? She says, well, yeah. When you come into our hotel and you destroy our property, we have to charge you. Hold up, lady. First off, you're 19 years old. You're a fucking dickhead. Sorry, excuse my French, but you're a dickhead. Um, that is greedy and that's unethical. I can understand if you let the dog come in the room and again, sh poop everywhere, shit everywhere, all over the floor, pee everywhere. Um, again, you smeared hair dye everywhere or the towels, you know, the walls. That's understandable. But an honest accident that happens to women once a month you're charging her $150. At that point, I grabbed the sheets. I said, here, you do what you want. This is, that's not right. People are struggling as is to pay their bills. And again, something natural, you're gonna go charge her $150. You're pathetic. Um, at this point, I'm searching for doctors. I left that job. I was home for about a month or two. I was looking for doctors. I had sat down with my husband and realized that my health, my mental health were just not, not working. Um, I am getting sick and tired of being in the public. I am getting sick and tired of how people think. Most people nowadays have shit for brains. Um, and again, these are just my opinions and what I'm experiencing around my surroundings. I'm not talking about everyone else, just my surroundings. Um, it, it just, I couldn't comprehend how people think today and with not wanting children, I had turned 40 this year, realizing that, um, ovarian cancer ran in my family. It does. I wanted to protect myself. Now I couldn't go for a full ovaries or hysterectomy. I had my fallopian tubes removed. That way we're guaranteed no children. Um, yes, I know that there's protection and things like that, but 
my fear is they're not always 100%. I really just wanted to get the operation done. So at this point, I'm, I'm hunting down doctors, um, trying to find, you know, just regular doctors, therapy, you name it. Um, a lot of the stuff here, I have to drive far to Atlanta with my insurance. I don't do well driving in the city. I am born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and never drove up in New York. I learned to drive here in Georgia 12 years ago, going on 13 years in February. So I've driven to Atlanta twice on my own. It is a nightmare just just trying to get through. It's like, yeah, not happening. I'll stay in the countryside, the little areas that I can drive. And when it comes to the city, um, I have my husband just drive us with the kids, whatever we need. Excuse me. So I tried my hand again. I want to get back into housekeeping, but I want a manager role, supervisor role. I'm good at what I do. I have a keen eye, um, sensitive nose to, you know, to smells and things like that. And, you know, cleaning is very calm and soothing, especially when you don't have your kids, especially when you're not micromanaging and things like that. So I landed at another hotel not too far from me and I did the right thing by trying to do things by the book I tried to follow procedures every time I had ideas it got shot down um, policies were not conducted basically you can call off whenever the hell you wanted and it was okay um, Again, I, this place I'm not going to go into because when you want to talk about shit show, this place was a shit show. This last hotel was a shit show. Um, what I will say is that the experience that I've had over the years um, working in the hotel industry and dealing with guests, running a team of 10, 13 women, um, I've grown a lot of respect for my team in order to have a successful business besides treating the guests correctly you got to have a team that respects you since day one not a single person respect me there um when it comes to time management obviously i was a manager for a reason years ago because i knew what the hell i was doing time management was out the window the call-offs were out the window um proper training was out the window uh, you had people racking up on overtime, but yet shit still wasn't getting done. And when I came in, it was more of a, I had to take full responsibility, whether I was on medical leave or physically for three weeks, I couldn't do a lot of heavy lifting. I couldn't do some of this stuff. So they parted ways with me, um, which is completely fine, to be honest with you. Because again, I, I put my mental health first. I went into work four days after my surgery to obviously get to work. I had to make a paycheck, number one. And number two, um, I guess to prove a point in a sense, um, you had all these people calling out for the most dumbest shit. And meanwhile, I'm over here. I had my tubes just ripped out. And as much as I can't do a lot of physical labor of lifting, I still made the effort to come into work. Show my team that I'm there for them. Commercial. But that went unnoticed. That's when you realize this is toxic. Mentally, it's unstable, it's disrespectful, and I am not going to sit here and keep trying to push myself harder when I know what I'm capable of. I know I am professional. I know how to do things, um, again, by the book, handbook, policies, um, and when you are sitting there and not backing up your your other department head you start to feel like you're walking on eggshells 
you start to feel attacked every day. And again, I'm fine with it. Um, I will say I wish everyone there nothing but the best. Um, you know, good luck to y'all. Just know the way you conducted things and treated me, pure shit show, pure toxic. Just disgusting. If you are at a place that you know is declining between your mental health and declining, you know, your thinking process and you start to feel like, is this even worth it anymore? Why am I working so hard and I'm being treated X, Y, and Z? Just walk away. Walk away. We have so much going on in this world, a lot of bigger things than to be treated sideways by other people. So, um, I've been home now almost a week and that's okay. Um, my husband is a truck driver. We are okay. For me, going back to work was making a, an extra paycheck on the side and be able to go on, you know, vacations and things like that with my family. Um, I did want to meet other moms, you know, kind of make some friends, female friends. Uh, if I got lucky to meet a crafter, that would have been awesome and great. But obviously that didn't happen for me. So um, I like to get back to work. I don't like the fact of cabin fever in the house. It bothers me. Um, COVID took a toll on me being home with the kid. I know it took a toll on everybody. I'm, I'm not just saying me. I know it took a toll on everybody, but for me personally, I've been a stay at home mom for quite so many years. And it was like, I, I had to get back to the working field. I, I needed to get out. I needed, you know, to be out there. But now <laughs> resorting back to what my original statement was. I don't want to be around people that are just toxic. I don't want to be around shit for brains people, especially. I don't want to deal with... I just don't want to deal with negativity. Um, I would rather surround myself with people who are positive and successful and, um, you know basically give you a fighting chance as well in the workplace. Um, so yeah, it just, it took a toll, but I'm okay. I'm getting better each day. Um, so back to my surgery and stuff, enough of the toxic shit show the last eight months. So it's not just the recent job that I left. It's the last couple of months of, um, just how people think between it's it's hard for me to explain um because i i, I still want to maintain uh professionalism i don't want to come out my face because trust me this is the third time i'm recording this i recorded two videos last night and the vulgarity um the honesty that came out of my mouth was just like yeah we are that person, but not on the internet. So let's not do that. <laughs> so, um, I just wish people nothing but the best. And that's how I'm going to leave that. So getting back to my surgery, um, we're coming up on three weeks. I'm doing a lot better. I've healed a lot better. Um, doctor cleared me for, you know, exercise and lifting again and, um, I can pig out on whatever I want to eat. <laughs> so, cause you know, I was feeling bloated. It was kind of bothering me. It was kind of making me feel like shit and whatnot. So, but yeah. Um, so that's to sum everything up. Um, my surgeries, what I was going through physically with the medications and trying to hold down a job. Um, I'm still looking for another doctor to get a second opinion on what's going on with my health, why I'm feeling the way I've been feeling recently, or at least the last couple of months. Um, where I've been, just 
you know, I have my good days, my bad days. Like right now, I feel like she's flaring up a little bit. So, yeah, I look tired. I am tired. <laughs> I really haven't been sleeping well, though. Um, I'm just, I don't feel well half the times. You know, I get up, I, I muster up the, the strength to get the kids ready for school and, you know, keep up with the house. And at a time when I was working um, to get through a long day, still come home, cook, clean, the whole shebang. But I'm tired. But the minute I hit the bed, I'm like a deer in the headlights. I can't sleep. <laughs> so it's super weird. My brain doesn't shut off. Um, whether I'm thinking about the kids and school, my husband, projects, work, whatever. It just, it, she never shuts off. So that's my everyday um, that I deal with. And um, yeah. So now that I've put that out there, um, I will say take care of yourself. Whether it be emotional, physical, spiritually, <clears throat> mentally, excuse me. Take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Um, I don't want to sound like, you know, other cliche. <laughs> we all have one life to live. <laughs> Put yourself first. Put your health first. Put your family first. Um, that's what matters. Okay? And for me, that's what it's come down to. Um, putting my health first. Putting my children first putting my family at first um, and hitting my age too I can't deal with drama I can't deal with toxicity I can't deal with a bunch of 30 year olds acting like they're dumb as shit 15 20 year olds I just I don't have the patience for that um, I'd rather be in the comfort of my own home working on my projects being there for my family and find something that's more positive in my life. Surround myself with more positive people and actually do their job by the book again. Uh, do things the right way, how it's supposed to be done. So that's all that. Now that that spiel is out of the way, um, that trash is out of my life, now it's just moving forward um, positively in the workspace, positively at home with my children, my husband and my family. Um, working on more projects. I'm hoping to get my Etsy shop up hopefully in the next week or two. And I know I start an Etsy shop, but it gets very confusing for me. And at that point, I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I would rather somebody just DM me on Instagram, I, if I can figure out how to use it still, <laughs> uh, TikTok or Facebook. And um, I can just do, you know, take um, commissions and things like that. So it's just easier for me that way. Um, if you go to my Facebook, Tina's Knitting Needle, and you go to my um, photos, I have different folders. You'll see a lot of the stuff that I worked through over the years. Um, anything bigger than a shawl, it will take some time to make because they are blankets. Hats, beanies, I can knit them up, no problem. Shawls, I can crochet them up, no problem. Um, so, yeah. A um, couple new changes. So, now we're moving on. Um, so a couple new changes, as I said, with the nerve damage <laughs> in my face, I get a lot of migraines. So before all that, three years ago, I had got my doth pierced on this side. I got little butterflies in there. So I got my doth pierced three years ago. She healed up pretty, really good. Recently with um, this side of my jaw, and my, I've been having a lot of migraines. So about a month ago, I went and got this side of my doth pierced. This one's not healing as quickly as this one did. This one has still got her issues. So um, I don't know. If she doesn't heal, hopefully within the next month. And I know it takes a year to fully heal. But if um, the goopy crappiness and the swelling go down, great. If not, she's coming out. I started to gauge my ears. I've been wanting to do this since I was younger. It's, I don't know. It's just, if they're cute. They're cool. I like them. Um, a lot of stuff I didn't do when I was younger because of the kids. Um, I don't know. I just, I didn't do it. So, and yes, my piercings are off. You know, my lovely father decided when I was a kid to pierce me with uh, sewing needles. <laughs> I never fixed it. Again, don't care. 
So my smaller ones are a six gauge, four millimeter, and these uh, main ones here are four gauge, five millimeter. Um, I did buy some earrings that have these little hooks so I can change them out. And um, I finally repierced this one back on Mother's Day. Excuse me. Back on Mother's Day. I had her when I was like 19, 20 years old. So, and one day I think I was, I took a shower and I wiped my face and whoosh, <laughs> the ring came right out and I could never it was L-shaped corkscrew of course whatever no it was a corkscrew could never get it back in so I was like fuck it I'm not doing it um, recently I wanted it back in and started putting all my butterflies back in started putting some of my piercings back in um, my goal at the end of this year is to have a couple of helixes done I'm thinking of maybe um couple of flats in here I don't want to do the heavy piercing I've had my eyebrow when I was younger I don't want to do the face piercings anymore I'm um, just keep it girly and simple but I definitely want to do my piercings on my ears um, yeah anyways so those are a couple of changes that have been happening and helping out with my migraines too is the piercings and um, just trying to bang out some of my blankets now I did talk about um, quite a few items too that I didn't get to show. I did talk about one of my monsters and I had picked up um, four, is it four or five, I don't remember, it was like four or five balls of um, Karen one pound, but they were all like 449. So, and I've used these colors before. So I managed to get my hands on soft sage. I picked up, I think two of these yeah and as you can see I used them because it was for the monster I was able to pick up the peach it looks it's not too peachy it looks lighter on the camera but it's actually a little bit darker so I got the peach I got two or three of those now however I did talk about um excuse me I did talk about a um sweater that I wanted to work on so I wanted to knit a um, the flax by Tin Can Knits. Um, I wanted to knit that, but considering, excuse me, knitting takes a little bit longer. I'm okay at knitting. Um, I can I can do simple patterns. I can read simple patterns, but when it starts getting intricate, yeah, I'm not the one. So going back and forth, or well, I like to do round um, in a circle for my knitting. I had put on weight, lost weight. Medication earlier this year had totally f with me so bad to the point where weight was up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I was at 150 by February-ish. And then um, I'm seven months sober from alcohol. I stopped drinking earlier this year. Um, that was another life change for me. I had to give up the drinking. Um, it just, it wasn't working for me anymore. I keep messing with this damn thing. <laughs> um, it wasn't working for me anymore. Just, it, it wasn't helping me psychologically. It really wasn't. So I had to stop drinking. I started comfort eating and then medication um, with eating. And so the weight's been up and down. I had this beautiful orange sweater. I was working on a peach. And that peach one, which is close to similar to this one I just showed, um, she was out to here. Like my shoulders were out to here. Here. I was like, yeah. Now, granted, I could have maybe thrown a cute black belt, maybe some um, leggings and some Mary Janes. And that would have been the cute little outfit to wear. But no, I didn't want to deal. So I will try to show without my camera falling because yesterday that was one of the other things that I had an issue with. Hey, kitty. Mommy needs the couch. My cat is so pissed right now. <laughs> Kyrie. Give mommy like a minute. <laughs> so she's living in this pretty bag that I got uh, about two, three years ago for my birthday. Yep. Let's just hope the camera does it. Oh. I'm not. I'm gonna be quick with this one, um, just to show what I had worked on and I pulled her apart. Oh, it's on this side, right? Yeah. So um, I had halfway down to to my belly. Um, and I pulled it apart because, again, she was super big. 
I managed to get um, these are all one pound with love obviously three of the dye lot that I bought are the same or I think it's two and two it is what it is so I figured the um all the ribbing and stuff is going to be the darker orange and the cuffs and the bottom ribbing and then the sweater will be the off peach so this is the neckline I fell in love this was the first one that I did that was pretty on point really pretty and I tinkered back um, got to a point where I was able to run my needle through again pick up my stitches and twist my stitches the right way so now um, I have to do my count and tweak the sweater so if this is like 175 and a large is like 170 that's okay I could always pick up two stitches knit together to, to get it um, to sit right on my person so this one is on the back burner for a little while um, only because it did take me quite a few months to get the sweater done and then I was again so livid that I had to pull it apart because of my weight so she is on the back burner for a little bit but I did talk about how I wanted to knit a um, again a flax tin can knit using this beautiful olive yarn that I had gotten um, by Big Twist. What is the color on here? Yeah, she is olive drab. Oh, she is gorgeous. And I don't do lots of browns. I don't do lots of greens or olives and tans. Um, it was just never my thing growing up. I am kind of, I'm a blue kind of girl. But I wore a um, a tan and a brown tank top the other day and it really accentuated my natural tan um, I am Hispanic I'm Puerto Rican so um, I was a lot darker when I was younger but I've, I've lightened up over the years so as I'm getting older I'm like oh, you know what I want to step out of my comfort zone and start wearing different colors so she is gorgeous and honestly she feels like um, a Karen one pound uh, a good ball because sometimes I'm gonna be a little rough so she's a little good ball and Karen pound um, or no excuse me line brand with uh, one pound with love she's the big twist oh my god she's super soft she's gorgeous and I'm about to sneeze Ooh, bless me <laughs> so I got two of these um, it says for an adult it only needs one ball for a sweater I doubt that very highly depending on the size you are uh, 1,009 excuse me 1,093 yards 17.6 ounces 1,000 meters and 500 grams um, yeah I, I don't know so I picked up two and my allergies are kicking my ass today. I picked up two of those. And um, I was on TikTok the other day. And this young lady, um, lovely girl, I follow her. Can't remember her name. I'm so sorry, sweetheart, if you watch this video. <laughs> um, she made um, a crocheted father pullover by Yarnspirations. Well, it used to be Red Heart, but now by Yarnspirations. Sweater. And she used wool, and the drape to it was gorgeous. The colors that she ran, even though it was scrap yarn, I believe it was scrap yarn, wool, it, the way she did it was gorgeous. I'm like, okay, I want to get my videos out there, and I want to be able to work on something. I don't want to sit here and have a blanket take me down, you know. So um, we're going to go with a sweater. So that's what we're going to do with that one. And my last project I am going to show was something that I did show, um, I want to say earlier this year, or maybe, um, oh shit, kind of picked up my shirt, sorry. <laughs> I want to say um, maybe November, December. I believe it's called um, Snow Days with Hot Chocolate by The Crochet Crowd. Now, this one really kind of took a toll because I can read patterns, as I said. But the white part of it just really, really got to me to where I was like, yeah, we're not doing this. I think I'm attached somewhere. I think I'm attached to a ball. 
I am attached to a ball in here, so be careful with that. Um, sorry, Kyrie. Mommy needs the couch again. <laughs> so, she's super beautiful. Okay. So, you start off with this um, beautiful giant square. Um, square, you know, uh, snowflake. And very, very intricate. Love it. Beautiful pattern. Um, then after that, you make 12 of these little mini ones. Yeah, I can see. And then you sew them all together, whip stitch them all together. And then you do um, this other pattern here. Um, one, two, three. Three to four repeats. Now when you get up to this white here, um, you do, I believe, a half double crochet, but then you have this chain link um, running across. I don't know what that is. I have maybe two more corners to get through. I was like, yeah, no, we're probably not doing this. Um, with this blanket, I really don't want anybody to use it. It's not for anybody to use. It's more for Christmas show. So during the holidays, my red and white pinwheel was sit on this couch displayed. And this one's probably going to display on my longer couch, um, just for show. I don't have, you know, fancy furniture and stuff like that. So I cover them, drape them with my blankets, especially for the holidays. So she's also gone on the back burner. I think I'm going to finish up with the white and maybe put a couple of double crochets, um, front post, back post um, stitches, just to give it another one or two inches of white. And then maybe just one round of half double crochet in red. I, as I want to do the pattern. I really want to follow the pattern. But um, there's only so much that my arthritis can handle. So probably not. <laughs> and that is it for today. Um, as I said, I'm hoping that I can get this blanket. The white one that you saw me working on. She's probably going to be child size. Um, I don't plan on finishing it fully, only because I hate tinsel. There's tinsel through it. I, I don't put tinsel on my Christmas tree. I don't like it in my house. I hate garland. Ergo, I got this for a gift as Mother's Day last year, and um, we're just going to use it. So <laughs> it is going to just be um, just for decoration at the edge of my bed. So um, I'm probably going to get through this bowl by today. Um, depending on if, if it's not enough decoration to hang over the bed, I'll go in with one more ball. If it's enough, then Hey, that works for me. And I'm, I'm trying really to tie up the loose ends. So after this blanket is done, it is snow days, but obviously snow days, I'm not touching until probably October when I'm doing content and I have more, um, holiday content to show. So she will sit back there. I don't actually have anything else going on at the moment. So I might have um, my sweater started hopefully in the next day or two. And I might bring out the Centro and start um, whipping up some hats with some um, Dollar Tree yarn that I have. Um, maybe get back into the crafting a little bit. You know, I, I kind of miss sitting here and, and making beautiful things and being able to show um, some content to y'all and whatnot. Any hoot, we're at 48 minutes in. Um, a lot better than yesterday's videos. I think I had an hour. <laughs> so, um, I want to thank you all for stopping by, listening to my story, um, seeing my, my beautiful, um, I don't want to say works in progress, my beautiful projects. Um, I, I put a lot of love into my projects and I know a lot of us crafters do, and we love everything that we do when it comes to our arts and crafts and whatnot, but just to stop by and be like, Oh my God, that's so pretty. And I, you know, I want to make that. I thank you for stopping by and just checking my, my channel out. Um, and this is where the rambling part comes where I just talk a lot of shit and I don't know how to wrap up. <laughs> Thank you everybody again for stopping by and I all have my blah, 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 blah. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy crafting and see y'all soon. Bye.